Welcome back to Bio 43 Pathophysiology. This is lecture four. We're still continuing with the first topic of mechanisms of cell injury. And now we're into chemical, biological agents, and radiation. There are multiple ways to damage cell structures through chemical injury. Toxic chemicals may lead to membrane damage and increased permeability or cause damage by binding with a component of the membrane or or organelle. Chemicals can also cause enzymatic pathways to be blocked or disrupt the osmotic balance in a cell. Alcohol, over-the-counter drugs, prescription drugs, and recreational drugs can damage the cell through one of the above mechanisms. For example, ethyl alcohol, the kind you drink, is known to damage the gastric mucosa, liver, and cause damage to a developing fetus. There are more direct assault, the, uh, these are more direct assaults on the cell from the alcohol. Acetaminophen, on the other hand, is detoxified by the liver and then converted into a highly toxic metabolite. Normally, glutathione is found in the liver to, dox, to detoxify this metabolite, but when large amounts of acetaminophen are converted, as in taking a bunch of pills, the glutathione in the liver becomes overwhelmed and necrosis can occur from the buildup of the toxic metabolite. How many drugs can you name that contain acetaminophen? Biologic agents include both viruses and bacteria, but also include our body's immunological response to foreign invaders. For example, viruses hijack cells by being incorporated into DNA cells, in the case of retroviruses, that is. Then they can multiply until their numbers become so great as to break out and overwhelm the cell's defenses. Bacteria are a little more straightforward. They tend to release endotoxins that increase capillary permeability and lead to cellular swelling and possible cell death. That should be familiar by now. In either case, however, immunological inflammatory responses alter normal cellular function when the body cells are indirectly damaged by an immune response targeted at an infectious agent. When there is an infection in the body, white blood cells release chemicals that are meant to target the invading organisms, such as histamines, kinins, complement, proteases, lymphokines, and prostaglandins. Some of these names might be familiar to you from previous classes, but don't be too concerned about it right now if they're not. What is important to know right now is that the chemicals cause an inflammatory response, which begins the healing process by drawing blood and fluids to the area in order to isolate the infectious agent, as well as drawing white blood cells in order to combat it. White blood cells can damage neighboring cells and tissues when free radicals that were produced to combat the infection come into contact with them. One of the major problems with radiation is that they cause the formation of massive amounts of free radicals. Free radicals are molecules that have an unpaired electron in their outer orbital, causing them to steal hydrogen atoms and form abnormal molecular bonds. Inside cells, they come into contact with other molecules, react with them, and are in turn converted to free radicals themselves, creating a cascade. Free radicals can be thought of as a kind of a stray bullet in a coffee can. It will bounce around, causing damage all over the place before it stops. Likewise, a free radical has an unpaired electron and desperately tries to fix the problem by colliding with other molecules and stealing their electron. I guess another way to look at it is to picture a whole class of students, say 50 students, with only 49 chairs. The professor then declares that there's an exam where 70% of your grade, but you have to sit in a chair to take the test. Imagine the anarchy. That's free radicals. So ionizing radiation causes free radical production, kills cells directly, interrupts normal cellular replication, and can directly cause genetic mutations. But did you know that most radiation injury is caused by localized irradiation that is used in the treatment of cancer? Kind of makes you think, doesn't it? 
here are some other causes of free radical formation. Notice how UV light, ionizing radiation, smoking, air pollution, and inflammation all have similar end results. One interesting known mechanism for cellular, cellular damage is the good old-fashioned overexposure to the sun. The harmful rays cause the formation of a thymine dimer, which causes a kink in the DNA strand. Why would this be bad for a cell? Please read more about it at the link provided on your transcript. Incidentally, these same rays that cause this damage from the sun are found in tanning beds. The general rule is that there is no such thing as a safe tan. I'm going to end right there, and we will pick up on nutritional balances in the next uh, installment.